Are you looking for an athletic scholarship? You're in the right place. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. We're here to help your family navigate the recruiting road all the way to an athletic scholarship. He's a recruiting expert and a dad of two college athletes. He has a wealth of experience to share. Here's Recruit Me CEO, Brent Hanks. Welcome to episode 328 of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. This episode is called An Inside Look at the NCAA, NAI, and NJCAA Websites. This episode focuses on the guides for the college-bound student-athlete that gives a plethora of helpful information to a potential recruit. Episode 326 covered eligibility centers, and last week's episode 327 covered academic requirements of each level of play. This is the third episode in a series of inside looks into the NCAA.org, the NAIA.org, and the NJCAA.org websites. The Athletic Scholarship Podcast and its parent company, Recruit Me, wants to save you money as you get recruited and wants to save you time and stress too. If you just started searching without a plan, you can get lost and frustrated in the vast amount of information in just these three sites. This week's episode dives into the websites to show you how to get to the college-bound student-athlete guides at each of the NCA, NAI, and JUCO levels. The NCA and the NAIA schools are four-year colleges or universities, and the junior college level have two-year schools to set you up for those four-year colleges. The NCAA Guide for the College-Bound Student-Athlete 2022-2023 is a 40-page PDF. There is also an NCAA International Academic Standards for Athletic Eligibility, too. The NAIA Guide for the College-Bound Student-Athlete is a 7-page PDF, and the NAIA has a 5-page PDF for international students. The NJCAA website takes you to a page that covers information for competing in the NJCAA or the JUCO level. Let's start by guiding you through how to get to the NCAA Guide for the College-Bound Student-Athlete. I could give you the website address or link, but let's do the long division process. Start by going to NCAA.org, then move over to the Student-Athletes pull-down. Click on the Want to Play College Sports link. As you saw in that pull-down, there are 15 different links with a boatload of college information on recruiting, sports, and college life. The next page has a link for Download These Resources. Click there. Last week's episode, episode 327, covered the Quick Hits links. Let's go down to the Comprehensive Guides section and click on the Guide for the College-Bound Student-Athlete PDF. Now we are on the 40-page guide in PDF form. Page 2 of the guide provides you with a form that you can fill out that is important information for your NCA Eligibility Center account. The form lets you fill out the date registered, your NCA ID number, your password, your username, which is the email that you used. RecruitMe recommends that you create an email like SuttonHanks2022 at Yahoo.com. Use your first and last name and your year of high school graduation. Use this email only for recruiting and one that you can use after high school and one that your family can access to be able to help you with your recruiting. Fill in the high school or the schools you attended, the date of six semester transcripts submitted, the date of test scores submitted, the date of final transcripts submitted with proof of graduation, and the date you requested your final amateur certification. This is a great piece of the recruiting puzzle. Page three is the table of contents. Here are the items in the guide. The table of contents lists page two, what is the NCAA? Page three, how to use this guide. Page 4, NCAA Sports. Page 5, Scholarships. Page 6, National Letter of Intent and Thinking of Going Pro. Page 7, Our Three Divisions. Page 8, Time Management. Page 11, Initial Eligibility. Page 12, High School Timeline. Page 13, Student Registration. Page 15, Test Scores. Page 16, Transcripts equivalency tests, and diplomas. Page 17, what is a core course? Page 18, non-traditional and online courses. Page 19, grade point average and questions to ask. Page 20, Division I academic standards. Page 22, Division I sliding scale. Page 23, Division I worksheet. Page 24, Division II academic standards. Page 26, Division II sliding scale. 
Page 27, Division II Worksheet. Page 28, Division III Requirements and Amateurism. Page 31, International Students. Page 32, Homeschool Students. Page 33, Education Impacting Disabilities. Page 34, Important Recruiting Terms. And page 35, Recruiting Calendars. I'm going to highlight some of these topics, but not all of them. There are more than 1,100 colleges and universities in the NCA supporting 500,000 college student-athletes in 19,500 teams that compete in NCA sports. The three-division structure was adopted in 1973 to create a fair playing field for similar schools and to create an opportunity for more players to win a national championship. Go to ncaorg backslash divisions for more on those divisions. NCA Division I, Division II, and Division III. Page 3 of the NCA Guide asks who should use this guide. It says that four groups that are involved in the NCA initial eligibility process. Number one, high school athletes hoping to compete in an NCA college sport. Number two, parents, guardians, and family members of those high school students. Number three, high school counselors and athletic administrators. And number four, high school and non-scholastic coaches. There are many other links and contact information to the NCA on this page. Page four shows you the NCA sports. There are 90 national championships in 24 sports across the NCA Division I, Division II, and Division III levels. There are 45 championships for women, 42 for men, and three co-ed championships. Fall sports are men's and women's cross country and soccer, and men's football and water polo and women's field hockey and volleyball. Winter NCAA sports listed are men's and women's basketball, fencing, indoor track and field, rifle, skiing, and swimming and diving. There are also gymnastics and ice hockey. An additional men's winter sport is wrestling, and an additional women's sport is bowling. Then spring sports are men's baseball and volleyball, women's beach volleyball, rowing, softball, and water polo and both men's and women's golf, lacrosse, outdoor track and field, and tennis. Emerging sports are women's acrobatics and tumbling, equestrian, rugby, triathlon, and wrestling. Page 5 of the NCA guide is scholarships. NCA Division I and Division II provide more than $3.7 billion in athletic scholarships to 190,000 student-athletes. That is an average of $19,473 per student-athlete. NCAA Division III schools do not offer athletic scholarships. This page states that about 2% of high school athletes are awarded athletic scholarships to go to college. Division I schools may provide tuition and fees, room and board, books, and other expenses related to attendance of school. Division II athletic scholarships can cover tuition and fees, room and board, and course-related books and supplies. The page states that most student-athletes that receive athletic scholarships receive an amount that covers a portion of the total cost, and that many student-athletes benefit from academic scholarships, financial aid programs, and need-based aid. Division I schools may provide a multi-year scholarship, and Division II schools must provide a one-year scholarship. Many scholarships in both levels are re-earned every year, Division I and Division II may provide funding for the completion of your bachelor's or master's degree after your playing time. If a school plans to reduce or not renew your aid or scholarship, the school must notify you in writing by July 1st before the next school year. The head coach decides who receives scholarships. Page 6 hits on the National Letter of Intent, or NLI. By signing an NLI, you are agreeing to attend a Division I or a Division II school for one year. NLI member institutions agree to provide athletic aid for one year as long as you are admitted to the school and are eligible under NCAA rules. The NLI is voluntary and is not required to get a scholarship. Signing an NLI stops your recruitment and other college coaches are prohibited from contacting you. There are different rules if you want to get out of your signed NLI visit nationalletter.org. Page 6 also hits on the subject of thinking of going pro, and it gives you some stats. Page 7 highlights a chart of the three NCAA playing divisions. 
This page says the three divisions were created in 1973 to align like-minded campuses in areas of fairness, competition, and opportunity. There are columns for each division of the NCAA, Division I, Division II, and Division III. It states that Division I has 350 schools, Division II has 300 schools, and Division III has 432 schools. Median undergrad student enrollment is 8,466 students for Division I, 2,323 students at Division II schools, and 1,655 students in Division III. Students who are athletes are one athlete to every 23 students at Division I schools, one athlete to nine students at Division II schools, and one athlete per six students at Division III schools. Division I schools and Division III schools average 19 sports teams, and Division II averages 16 teams. And the chart shows that 57% of athletes receive athletics aid and some athletic scholarship in Division I. The Division II has a partial scholarship model and gives 60% of student-athletes athletic aid. And Division III has no athletic scholarships, but 80% of the athletes receive non-athletic scholarship aid. A side note on this page states that Division I student-athletes graduate at a higher rate than the general student body. Division II is the only division with schools in Alaska, Puerto Rico, and Canada. And Division III's largest school is 23,854 undergrads, and the smallest school has 257. Page 8, 9, and 10 cover time management in each division. These are important pages with important information to prepare you for your future college experience. Page 11 of the Guide for the College-Bound Student-Athlete is Initial Eligibility. Episode 327, last week's episode, covered this subject. This page states that as a college-bound student-athlete, you're responsible for your eligibility. That means planning ahead, taking high school classes seriously, and protecting your amateur status. It can be a difficult first step, but the benefits of being a student athlete are worth the effort. Page 12 is a high school timeline. Its header is ninth grade, register, and advises you to start planning and register for a free profile page at the eligibilitycenter.org website. And find your high school list of NCA approved core courses at eligibilitycenter.org backslash course list. Then the header for 10th grade is plan. Under the heading, it says that if you are getting recruited by an NCAA school, then you can transfer your profile page to the certification account. Also, monitor the task list in your NCAA Eligibility Center account. At the end of your school year, ask your high school counselor to upload your official transcript to the Eligibility Center. And if you fall behind academically, get help from your high school counselor. The header for 11th grade is Study. Update your sports participation information in the Eligibility Center. Visit with the high school counselor on your core course grades. Take the SAT or ACT test. And submit the scores to the Eligibility Center using code 9999. And again, upload your official transcript to the Eligibility Center. The ninth grade banner says Graduate. You can request your final amateur certification beginning April 1st. Take or retake the SAT or ACT test if needed. Complete your final NCA-approved core courses as you prepare to graduate, and after you graduate, ask your high school counselor to upload your final official transcript with proof of graduation to the Eligibility Center. A few things I can add are that there are COVID adjustments for this year and next year's enrollments, and that Recruit Me recommends you take your SAT or ACT test in your sophomore year. Pages 13 through 33 is a lot of repeat, but great information about all the student registration and eligibility center information. Go to this guide to read all the NCA registration information. These pages cover not only NCA Division I, NCA Division II, and Division III, but international and homeschool student requirements. Page 34 is full of recruiting terms, terms like contact period, dead period, full-time student, unofficial visit, walk on, and more. Page 35 through 37 lists the recruiting calendars. NCA member schools limit recruiting to certain periods during the year. Recruiting calendars promote the well-being of college-bound student-athletes and ensure fairness among schools, defining certain periods during the year in which recruiting may or may not occur in a particular sport. This page, page 35, 
states, due to COVID, recruiting counters may be adjusted. Visit ncaa.com backslash recruit cal, C-A-L. There are individual recruiting calendars for these sports. Men's Basketball Division One, Women's Basketball Division One, Football Division One, Men's Ice Hockey Division One, Lacrosse and Softball Division One, Baseball Division One, and then All Other Sports Division One. Then there is one calendar for all sports in Division Two and Division Three. The calendar can tell you when you can get recruiting materials, like recruiting letters, social media messages and text messages, telephone calls, off-campus contact, unofficial and official visits. The back page, page 40, finishes off the guide for the college-bound student-athlete. The NAIA has a seven-page guide for student-athletes. Go to NAIA.org and click on the student-athlete link in the top right of the home page. There are three boxes on the next page. Click on the Future Student-Athletes box. Slide down to the Ready to Play part on this page and then click on the College Bound Guide. The seven-page PDF starts out with a list of all the NAIA sports broken down into fall sports, winter sports, and spring sports. The next page, page two, gives you knowledge about the NAIA participation experience. What's different about NAIA recruiting? Can I visit a campus for a tryout? What about letters of intent? Admission standards for athletes. What about financial aid, scholarships, grants, and loans? And questions for parents to ask the NAIA institutions about financial aid. Page 3 continues with the NAIA information about Do I meet the freshman eligibility requirements? And what if I didn't attend a U.S. high school? Page 4 goes into depth into the previously covered episode 327, NAIA Eligibility Center at playnaia.org. Page 5 answers questions for the NAIA college-bound student-athlete, like what are the transfer eligibility requirements? Who is considered a professional? Is there any age limit in the NAIA? How long can I compete? And what happens if I suffer an injury during college? Page 6 answers, what if I've competed in my sport outside of college? And how can I remain eligible during college? Jumping to the junior college level, the most equivalent guide on njcaa.org is a page after you click on Compete NJCAA at the bottom of the home page. The page has questions that help you understand the junior college level. There are over 500 junior colleges in 44 states and 70,000 student athletes in 28 different sports and 53 championship events. This page has a link to search NJCAA colleges and gives you information on how junior colleges are cost effective. It also points you to the eligibility centers of NCAA and NAIA for the next step. That is a rundown of some guides that the NCAA.org, NAIA.org, and NJCAA.org websites give you to help you get ready to get recruited and get into college. I went long today, so I'm going to just invite you to go to recruit-me.com to listen to past episodes and also invite you to listen to the Athletic Scholarship Podcast next Tuesday for 15 minutes that will change your athletic scholarship future.